What you need to do is make a radical change in the way you use what we call your physiology. It's a big word. It just means the way you use your physical body. I think the way you lead up, as opposed to calling out, is lead by example. You know, I think oftentimes we think we have to say something. We think we have to speak up. But oftentimes, if you lead with your actions, people respect you even more. Yeah. And we come from a society where young people, as well as old, we look each other up and down. Don't act like we don't. Grown folks, as well as kids, look at credentials. You walk in a place and you a high school dropout, people are like, oh, okay, I okay. Talk to me, like, help me to understand why I'm supposed. Those who had their back against the wall that were broke or addicted or alone. They were anxious, depressed, even suicidal. They were at the end of their rope with no help, solace, or escape in sight. Yet they reached deep inside themselves, found hope, trudged forward, and came out the other end. And of course, if they did it, so can you. I've taught this for 40-something years, 40 years, and about three years ago, Harvard finally did a study where they proved what they did worked, <laughs> and they called it these power positions. And what they showed was, if you stand, everyone can try this. Stand up just for a moment if you want. Everybody at home can try it as well. Let's do something really silly. Put both your hands on your hips like Wonder Woman or Superman or that stuff, right? If you stand like this and you breathe deep for just two minutes, what the science found was that you will absolutely increase your testosterone by 20%, man or woman. You'll drop your cortisol, which as you know, is the stress hormone by 22%, and you're 33% more likely to take action if you wouldn't have before because fear would have stopped you. Now, I don't have people just stand like this. I have people move, use their voice, make radical changes in their body. You'll feel it after two minutes. Or, you know, somebody who's, you know, puts their arms back like this and their feet up, that'll produce the same state. That when you do say something, it's like, okay, I respect it. He's been showing it. Right? I used to tell guys all the time, just leave, right? If you want to be respected, leave. Be at the front of the line. Do things the right way. Let your actions not betray your words. So when it is time to say something, don't be a guy that's just talking all the time because sooner or later, guys can become to a point where they're like, oh, man, he's just saying stuff. It produces more certainty in you. And that certainty gets you to take different actions. So if you are in a situation, you think of the worst scenario, your mom dying, no, my business goes under. I never achieve at the level I need to. All the things I have anxiety about, the minute you focus on them, you go into those states of fear and then you behave fearful and you get lousy results. And we get lousy results, what does it do to your brain? You go, see, I told you I couldn't do this. It becomes this <laughs> negative loop. So how do we break out of it? We change our focus by asking better questions. Ask this, answer this question in your mind. What is it in your life that you're proud of? If there's something you could feel really proud of right now by focusing on it, your children, yourself, something accomplished you did, how many can think of something you could feel proud of? And I don't mean fake pride, ego pride, like where you're making things up. I mean, well, you really did something you're proud of. Good, right now, close your eyes and focus on how it feels when you're really proud. Focus on that moment you're proud of. It's real. Grandma walk in the room. When my grandma used to walk in the room, my, my, this wasn't my biological father, but he raised me. He was 6'8", his brother was 6'6". Six, six. When my grandma walked in the room, all her sisters, everybody showed mad respect. My grandma walked in the room, everybody was like, hell, Shirley. Why? Because my grandma could cook her butt off, so she had mad respect on the whole block. I'm being real. Some of you, you respect yourself, but you're not taking care of yourself, and you go into these programs, and these kids looking at you like, who are you? And why should I respect you? Now, I know you think you deep and got it going on, but they don't think you deep and got it going on. But if you're leading by example, if your actions match your words, now when you say something, people are gonna respect it and know that it's coming from a great place. But oftentimes what happens is, guys say certain things and their actions doesn't match their words. And so when guys hear it, they don't take it serious, right? And so when you lead by example and then your words match, I think guys respect it even more. Right, like who you hang around is who you become. Who you run with determines the direction that you run. Right, the people that you're with every single day, they shape and mold your life, literally. Right, and for me, fortunately, I went through a situation with my injury, right? I had a brachial plexus avulsion. I ruptured the subclavian artery in my chest, almost took my life, ended up paralyzing my right arm and hand. I always look at that process, and I look at it like the process of elimination. And, no, and, and you have to impress them. 
you, you got to have some street cred for them. So what's your street cred? It's the work that you do. And when you, you sharpen yourself and you become a better tool. Look, I'm the only motivational speaker with a PhD. You don't need one to do what I do. You don't need a PhD to speak, but you do need a PhD to change the culture of your community. Yeah. You do need to understand leadership. You do. You do need to understand politics and how it works. You do. So do I need it to talk about, to uh, pump up a football team? Absolutely not. But to change the dynamics of a community, yes, I do. So I'm asking you the question, what are you going to do for you? See, because you want a lot from the job. And they did, hey, look, yoga, anybody, anybody was blessed by the yoga? Let me see your hand. The meditation, let me see your hand. You've been blessed by this conference. You were blessed. So the question is, you want your job to do certain things for you, but what are you going to do for you? Like, what's too much? Why I could make the most of my day if others have gone through so much more and didn't break under the weight of it all. If they can focus and believe the sun will come up again, then I can tackle anything that comes my way. Someone can survive cancer, the loss of a limb, the loss of a loved one, or even the Holocaust, then I can overcome. Whatever challenges come my way. I looked at myself in the mirror and I looked at myself in the mirror, man. I wasn't proud of who I was. And I, and I kept on backsliding, backsliding. And I made the decision. When I was 297 pounds, I gained 125 pounds. I was 175, 297. Had, had left the military, left the Air Force, and I was working for Ecolab, like $1,000 a month. I was at the bottom of the fucking barrel. I, I'd become exactly what life had made me and what I had made me too. I said, I'm gonna die trying. I don't give a fuck what it does to me. I don't give a fuck if I break myself off. I don't care if I lose legs. I don't care if I have stress. I, I don't care what it is. I don't care how much pain I go through. I don't care if this reflection in the mirror will change or I will die trying. I have to ask my son sometimes, he's millennial. I'm like, son, what's too much? Like for real, cause you ask, Dad, can you? I'm like, what's the son? At what point do you get that for yourself? So my son mad at me right now. He's like, Dad, you cut me off. I was like, what you mean I cut you off? You cut me off. Like, you used to bless me more. Now I'm working for you and I got to do all this stuff to get money. I said, because you about to get married. I don't want her to respect me. I want her to respect you. But she ain't going to respect you if I'm paying for everything. At what point? What you want me to get her a ring? <laughs> what you want me to do? You want me to buy her a ring? No, you laughing, but at what point do you not expect your job to do stuff that you should be doing for yourself? At what point should you be trying to develop yourself? Good. All right. So you got the work down. Put that one down. And just understand, I don't really, I, look, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I don't, I, I don't, I would hope that you would do better whatever percentage you wrote down. But I must remind you that the richest people in the world spend the most money on personal development. I will, I will not look at this guy in the mirror anymore. I go back to that mirror every fucking night and I usually shave my hand almost every damn night. And I gotta sit there for fucking 15 minutes and look at myself in the mirror. And that reflection is telling me every fucking thing I'm not. And it's just, some of us are allowed to go away from that. I was haunted. Every day, 24 hours a fucking day, this voice would be in my head. Hey, motherfucker, you ain't shit. This is what you're gonna be the rest of your life, man. To the point I said, you know what? I'm gonna break myself off, man, trying to fix this person. So that, that's why it's worth it, because now sitting in front of you today, I earn, I earn the right to be broken. And people go, man, what, what does that mean? Every scar, every wound, every broken bone, every issue I had, even all these fucking little marks come my body, it comes from sacrifice, trying to become someone. And I'm not saying do what I did. I am a process guy. I believe everything we do, all successes and achievements, can be reduced to a process. You want to write a book? There's a process. You want to direct a documentary? There's a process. You want to become a killer deposition taker? There's a process. When we look at others who have accomplished great things, perhaps we should look at them as a fountain of motivation, but rather study them to see how they accomplished. 
what they did. Can we replicate? Sometimes you can't 